Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, Red Laughlin here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is a worldwide audience, international, USA Global TV and radio. It's a wonderful show to learn many, many things. On Talking Heads today, we're going to continue our discussion on pain, pain management, pain control, but from a natural perspective. What can we do ourselves to alleviate, to even prevent maybe in some cases? That's one of the topics I want to talk about is how do we prevent pain, but that's not today. But regardless, let me get my slides lined up here first so we can begin that one. There's the first one. Okay, disclaimers. Uh, and I don't know why I have weight management there. That's incorrect. I'll have to change that one. Uh, I'm a researcher. I am not a doctor, never have been. I've never worked in the pharmaceutical industry. I fell in love with chemistry in high school. I got a degree in it and then ended up in Vietnam, never got a chance to practice it. But several years ago, my wife came down with breast cancer, and in part of my assisting, helping, I was able to reacquaint myself with chemistry, but from the perspective of what's going on in the human body, what, what controls do we have? So I started looking at what's happening at the cellular level from a cause and effect perspe uh, perspective. And you know, if this thing causes this to happen, what can I do to this thing to make this happen or not happen or happen faster? And there's a lot of things. If we understand the chemistry, then we can control things a lot. So if you have a cause, you should be able to at least address or fix a problem. But if all you're treating are symptoms, then you'll always be treating symptoms. Pain, like weight management above, is one of those things that's a very individual thing. Responses vary. You can have two people the exact same uh pain causing event yet one will feel absolutely blown away and another one yeah it's it hurts but that is what it is but pain is a complex physiological and psychological experience that serves to protect us our our physical being our mechanism so that we don't have additional potential harm or damage so in other words if i put my hand on that hot stove and i yank it away because it's hot i've learned two or three things in other words don't touch a hot stove but if I left my hand there because I wasn't getting that feedback, you know, then I would have a serious problem. So even though it doesn't sound right, you know, pain is a preventive mechanism. Uh, I wanted to do a section on pain hacks, and that's what we're talking about here. This is my personal perspective. Uh, we're looking at a cause of a pro problem. In some cases, it's pretty obvious if it's a particular kind, let's say a sunburn. Well, we know what caused the sunburn there, but sometimes a headache, a lower back ache, stomach ache, a lot of things may have more than one cause. So I look at it, what can be done without drugs, without surgery? Now, it may end up eventually being corrected by surgery, may end up having drugs to do it, but what are those things that we can control ourselves? What, what should we be talking to our doctor about? And if we can provide that level of awareness, now you have a place to start. Your health is your responsibility. On this program, we start with awareness, education, then action. So if you're already on medication and I suggest something, don't just take it to the bank. Talk to your doctor about it because there's a reason the medicine you're on is there. To take and do something else is not necessarily the smartest thing to be doing. Okay, we talked uh, last week about a various number of, of 
injuries that that have pain associated with tennis elbow, stomach ache, headache, et cetera. And so we're going to continue that list. We got down through stomach ache last week. We're going to start off today with, with headache. And we're going to be looking at what are these things, what are the causes, the general causes. There's a lot more than, than what I have listed. But what options do you have? And again, there's a lot more than I have listed. If I said, okay, you have an earache, uh, Google natural treatments for earaches, and it's going to give you something. And it may be something you don't even know about, something that's easy to, to do. So that's a place to start. That's where I started a lot of these things. I've had these kinds of pains. And I just, you know, from my own research, oh, this works, this one doesn't work. But regardless, let's talk about headaches. That's where we left off last time. You have a lot of causes for headaches. There's not one single thing that you can say, yeah, this it may, but there's other things too. So muscle tension, stress, uh, infection, sometimes withdrawal from something, caffeine in particular, dehydration, big, big item. A lot of medicines sometimes have a headache interface. Uh, hormonal changes, environmental factors. Lots and lots and lots of things cause a headache. But if you haven't been going through withdrawal from caffeine, okay, you can check that one off the list. If you're not on any meds and you look at the list of contraindications on the meds, okay, well, maybe meds is not the problem. Uh, I'm hydrating okay. So you can start to cross these things off. Well, am I under stress? Well, I can do some stress management. That, that might work. But eventually you might hone in on it. I know people who carry a lot of weight on their shoulders. Uh, my daughter being one, she has, she's a deputy sheriff. So she's got her vest, she's got her gun belt, she's got all sorts of things that are attached. And if you're not properly set up, that's all pulling down on you. You're straining that, that neck muscle and you're going to get a headache. You're going to get a backache, you're going to get a shoulder ache. A lot of things happen out. What can we do about it? Well, stop doing whatever you're doing. Well, that might not necessarily always be the case. But rest, hydration, if you're on caffeine withdrawal, maybe something with a little bit of caffeine. I'm not talking about downing you know, a whole uh, glass of iced tea or Coke or something, but maybe just the two or three swallows gets enough back in the system to make a difference. Uh, relaxation, cold compresses, sometimes cold on the back of the neck, or on the top of the head, a lot of places you can do. Breathing exercises, sometimes even a lifestyle change. Uh, if stress is causing the problem, you need to get into stress management. And there are many different kinds. Google has it. YouTube has many of them. And just because one doesn't work doesn't mean another might not work. So I would say at least two or three options. Same thing with the breathing exercises. If I'm doing a left nostril, right nostril, pranayama, I want to be able, okay, well, maybe that one did more. Let me try another one. Let me try another one. So it may be that breathing is not my issue. That's not going to help me. But maybe I'm going to find one that works really well, really quickly. Uh, EFT, for me, emotional freedom techniques, work very good because it has a relaxation component to it. But depending on your headache, the severity and the duration are something super critical. Uh, one of my brothers died several years ago, and he had been self-treating headaches for I found out later for decades and just over the counter medicine for what reason he never went to the doctor. I don't know. He got back from spending months over in Saudi Arabia, uh, back home. He's on the phone and literally drops dead. He had a, a brain aneurysm. Um, would that have made a difference? He had been to a doctor. I hope so, but I don't know. Anyway, moving right along. Foot, leg and hip issues. Um, one of my personal favorites. I've been a runner for decades. And my son was a runner in high school and the process of my following his progression and becoming more involved with running clubs and other things out there, I found lots and lots and lots of ways to injure myself. Uh, plantar fasciitis, I've had them on both legs twice at least. Uh, that's where you, you know, are comfortable. You get up and you start walking all of a sudden, you know, you have a big sharp pain in, in your heel or in your foot and you walk another 10 steps and it gradually goes away. That's probably plantar fasciitis. Uh, bunions, uh, gout, uh, having just worn shoes, sometimes that throws your gait off a little bit, your muscle imbalance. Uh, that's predominantly seen with chondromalacia patella. 
uh, and that's easy to, to diagnose by yourself. If you're walking downstairs and you have some really severe knee problems, but you don't have that same problem going upstairs, you might have what's called chondromalacia, uh, bursitis, uh, meniscus tears. I've had one of those. Uh, ligament injuries, had a couple of those. Gout, never had gout. Arthritis, we're going to talk a lot more about arthritis down the road, so I'm going to let that one go. Peripheral artery disease. And we talked about worn shoes. Well, you start wearing out shoes a certain way, uh, that can create problems. But you may actually have one leg longer than the other, and that can create a lot of problems. But the foot, the leg, the hip, they're all interrelated. And one may be, okay, I'm having shin splints. Well, that may be worn out shoes. I'm having gout. Well, the gout might be because of a diet issue. Uh, I'm having muscle imbalance. You know, there are things that can be done very, very easily. Let's move on here. Okay. The typical ice, heat, and rest is a, a good combination for almost any part of that. I like to take a very light dish cloth, dish towel, and just make it barely moist. Let's say I have it on my knee as an issue. I will put that on there, then I'll take some frozen corn or frozen peas and wrap around it and then roll the thing back on top. And about 20 minutes is about the maximum I'll go on ice. Take it off, let it come to room temperature. If I have the ability to stick something that I can heat up in a microwave for a little bit, put that on for uh, five minutes or so. But basically, just go to high ice and heat back and forth. Uh, lots of information out there, both on Google and on YouTube. Uh, find somebody you really trust. See if that'll work. If you know what caused the, the injury, you know, that makes it a whole lot easier to do something. Compression. Compression works very, very well for something like uh, chondromalacia. When you have a, a, the underneath of your kneecap, let's say this is your kneecap and you have a bone under here, typically that fits in nice and snug. But sometimes it's pull off to the edge and now all of a sudden you start wearing a little trough on the inside of your kneecap. And that's because your muscle imbalance between the muscles in the front of your leg and the muscles in the back of your leg. And all of a sudden, this thing that used to be a nice, smooth fitting gets pulled off to one side. And now you're kind of grinding down the middle. So the compression, you push everything right back down on top. And that's that makes everything, it, it doesn't loosen up. And you can go out and run. You can do everything you, you normally do. But it takes months of getting balance back into the front and back of the muscles. Now, ironically, one of the easiest uh, exercises to do is just a deep knee bend. And you can do that with a, with a compression bandage on or not. But those are things that balance out the front and the back uh, muscles. Uh, sometimes elevating your leg or your foot or whatever helps a little bit of that drainage away physical therapy, some lifestyle changes. You know, what are you doing that might have caused that? Maybe you started taking up running. Well, maybe you got into it too fast. Or replacing worn out shoes, or replacing the arch in sports on the inside, uh, do some muscle balancing, some stretching. Lots and lots and lots of things that can cause a problem with your hip, your leg, or your foot. But analyze what's going on, what might have caused it, take some remedial action in that area, and then, okay, did it work? Well, at some point in time, you may actually need to go see a doctor, but sometimes you can kind of help yourself. And that's what we're here today to talk about. Muscle strain, that could be from an overuse, going out there doing a lot of things. You come back in, muscle, oh, my shoulder, my back, my leg. My, uh, or it could be an overextension. You're reaching too far to pick something up. You try to pick it up and you strain something. Uh, it could be a sudden impact. It could be a, a trauma kind of injury. You're, you're thrown against something. You uh, are walking and you're not paying attention and all of a sudden you walk off the edge of a curve or into a hole. Uh, it could be an inadequate warm-up or a cool-down from whatever exercise you're doing. Uh, it can just be something as simple as muscle fatigue, weakness. You're just not using them. You're going out. All of a sudden you're using them. They're not as good as they were 20 years ago or you're using a poor technique. You end up straining the muscle or the ligament group around that muscle, but there are options. Obviously, look at what you're doing. Is there something that you made a change in your life recently? Did, did you start lifting weights? Did you start doing something you didn't do? That's a good place to start. Are you getting adequate rest? Uh, is it something that needs ice or heat or some level of compression or elevation? 
those are things that, that work out pretty well, pretty easily. But let's say that I'm reaching into the back of the trunk of my car and I'm picking something up and I come back and I do something to my lower back. That's probably a clue. That act of doing whatever I did kind of tweaked my back and then all of a sudden I can feel something there. Well, maybe one of the first things you ought to consider is what I call reverse stretching. You know, instead of sitting there and you're trying to uh, stretch and stretch and pull that muscle longer, maybe what you need to do is pull in the direct push in the direction of whatever's going on so in other words let's say that i want to take my thumb and i want to touch it to my elbow or to my wrist well typically i'm just going to be pushing in that direction all the time and that is not a reverse stretch that's just a stretch but what if i'm wanting to put my my stretch in the opposite direction toward the that direction away from my where my direction is so in my back i'm pushing away but I have somebody pushing with their hands on the back or I'm in a machine where I can adjust the weight and I can now stretch by going back, maybe not even going back as far as I want. So in the case of a stretch, I'm pushing in the opposite direction that I want to stretch and I'm actually stretching that muscle significantly much more than it would ever normally be. So if you're going out and you're beginning to do a new running program or whatever, you know, and you're trying to stretch your legs, you know, maybe you go ahead and you do your normal stretch, but then look, is there a way that you can do a reverse stretch on those same muscles? Because if you can do that, now you're getting a much fuller range of that stretch, which will help alleviate pain or prevent pain down the road. Physical therapy might be, requir might be required, uh, strengthening exercises. But again, you want to strengthen both sides of the equation. If you're having a lower back problem, you definitely need to strengthen your, your stomach muscles too. Uh, the tangent that's uh, trans uh, it's, it's the one you attach that goes crazy and just you know just vibrates and sends a little electrical shots in it trans epidural neural i can't think of the name of the tens right now i apologize for that massage sometimes just a simple massage is all that's needed but there are other options out there too arthritis something that i've had a lot of uh, I haven't had myself per se, but I've helped a lot of people who have had problems. And it's almost, you, know, you, you seem to think, well, if I have rheumatoid arthritis, it's an autoimmune disease, I can't do anything about it. Well, if it's an autoimmune disease, it's probably something that's passing through your stomach. Now, why? Because 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So if something you're eating is causing a problem from an autoimmune perspective, Maybe you need to take a look at the food you're, you're taking and putting through your body. Uh, with arthritis, it's an interesting thing because the, the pains are the same, but the cause may be different. Uh, and as we start looking at genetic issues, age, injury, overuse, over time, we find people over 40, over 50 have a lot more arthritic conditions than not. So if I have osteoarthritis, which might be a wear out mechanism, I have something there and normally it's it's protected and then over time it gets a little bit more uh, loose and now I start getting involved with collagen that's the body never sees but because of the wear out mechanism or the trauma that might have been an injury there your autoimmune system is going to respond and we've talked about that autoimmune response already where you end up with arachidonic acid and cox you know, cyclooxygenase and a lot of other things that are going to go on and if we can shut those things down, that is really and truly a good way of going. Well, one of the ways of shutting some of that stuff down is with type 2 undenatured chicken collagen. Why? Because when you prepare chicken breastbone a certain way, it almost looks like the mirror image of human collagen. Well, your autoimmune system has never seen human collagen because it's always been protected. You have an injury. All of a sudden, it's seeing collagen. It doesn't know what to do with it. It attacks it. That's where you get your swelling, your pain, your redness, your soreness, a little bit of heat, lots of things. That's your autoimmune response. So it could be an osteo. It could be a rheumatoid. But the undenatured chicken collagen is something you can buy over the net. It's, in, it's inexpensive. And you only need about 100, 120 days worth of supply because as you're taking these pills in, it's passing through your gut. Your gut is seeing this on a daily basis. And over about 90 days minimum, 
the immune system says, okay, I'm seeing this enough. Maybe it's not something I need to worry about. And it stops attacking itself. So from an arthritic perspective, having that type 2 undenatured chicken collagen can be a corrective way of doing things. Or if you want to take it early on and take it for at least three or four months, that might be another way of doing a preventive thing down in the world. Sometimes our diet, it might be a dairy diet, it might be gluten. Our diets are going to cause some kind of autoimmune response. So what problem do you have if it's an autoimmune issue? Look at the food you're eating. That may be part of the solution. Okay, let's look at one of those things that almost nobody ever talks about, your fascia. This is actually between your skin and your muscle. You have a white um, fibrous element that is called fascia. And sometimes when you're having a lower back pain, maybe the fascia in your right shoulder is causing the lower left pain because it's pulling everything out of whack. But it's pain caused by the interaction of the fascia to the muscles. And sometimes it's a chronic low-level pain, maybe like a back pain. Sometimes it's a neck pain. It can be plantar fasciitis in, your, in the arch of your foot. It can be the iliotibial band syndrome that is on the outside edge of your knees. It goes all the way up, it connects to your hip, goes on down past the knee. I know that if I start running in cold weather, uh, I can get this little ili I IBS, iliotibial band syndrome, and it just it creates a lot of problems quickly. And it's very, very difficult to stretch. It's very difficult to warm up, especially if you're outside doing something. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out what that was and how to, to go about treating it. Uh, plantar fasciitis is fairly easy. You just uh, uh, insert in the bottom of your shoe that will lift up that plantar fascia area. It's an arch support. Uh, but if it's some other part, it may require that you actually do a fascia stretch. And again, that's something I would say, let's look it up on Google. Let's look it up. Watch somebody doing it on YouTube. When you're seeing somebody do it, that makes it a whole lot easier than just reading the words and saying, yeah, what, what do they mean by that? But that is something that is, is controllable, and it might be the problem, even though it doesn't manifest itself. I have a problem here, but I can't figure out what it is. Well, let me try, let me try fascia. But sometimes it's caused by trauma. Sometimes it's caused by limited movement. You're just not doing much at all, couch potato. Sometimes it's, it's caused by a lot of repetitive movements. So there's not one single thing that causes a fascia problem. And sometimes it's unrelated to where the actual cause of that pain is manifesting itself. Uh, stretching helps, but it has to be a fascia stretching. Heat helps, relaxation, B12, massage. Those are all things that can, in fact, help with that, that problem. What if I happen to have what's called leg cramps, Charlie horse? Uh, sometimes at night, in fact, 75% of the times it's at night, you're in bed, you're asleep or almost asleep. And all of a sudden, something's happening in your foot, in your ankle, in your calf, in your knee, in your. And I can tell you, 90% of the time, it's probably going to be some kind of nutrient deficiency. And if you have in your bathroom, you know, something in potassium, magnesium, uh, it doesn't take much, sometimes just a single pill, sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes less, boom. You can go right back to sleep and not have a problem. If you're outside working a lot, you're sweating a lot, and you're not taking some extra potassium, calcium, or magnesium, that might be a clue because you're not providing what is sweating out of your body in order to make up for that, that lost sweat. Now you're going to have somebody knocking on your door when you go to, to bed at night saying, hey, I need some but you don't even know what it is. So the hydration, very, very important. Uh, some of the medications that that might be uh, applicable, look at the contraindications on the medicine. If it talks about leg issues. Now, I'm also kind of including restless leg syndrome in there because that is a leg cramp. Uh, that's when your, your legs just kind of have a mind of their own. It's a little bit more than just a simple cramp. And there's a lot of causes of restless leg syndrome. So it's just not a simple one. But if it's something simple, it may just be an electrolyte that you, your body needs. Uh, magnesium is probably one of the biggest ones. I found potassium and calcium are, are, are easy to, to get and take. Uh, vitamin B6, along with the B12 we, we had mentioned earlier on, on the last one. 
you know, the gamma amino uh, benzoic acid, GABA, uh, your 5-HTP, that's one of your uh, like folic acid kind of things, uh, melatonin. There are a lot of issues there that, that can be a problem that if you're not getting enough of it, your body's not making it, you're not eating the right kinds of foods, you're going to be deficient in it. Your body's going to tell you one way, shape, or form. And it might be fogginess, it might be a headache, it might be an ache somewhere else. But balanced nutrition is, is something that is a, it plagues 90% of the U.S. population, probably 90% of the world population. But it's something that, that is critical. So that being said, let me go ahead and we're going to talk about sunburn next time we come out. And so let's come on back down to uh, last part here on Amazon and on my website, redolaughlin.com. I have several books that are available that talks about the subconscious mind, our bodies, how we can uh, stop disease, how we can prevent it, slow it down a little bit on Alzheimer's and a book on there, how to write and publish your book for free. So I look forward to catching you all next week. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye now. If I look into your heart, are you looking back at me? Am I everything you want, baby? If my heart was in your hands, would it be for you and me? Would you want to keep it close, baby? baby, baby. I don't try to find the right guy, the one I dream to be. Give it all that you can, stumble and fall, love will set me free. Baby, 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 don't you know you'll drive me crazy. I love the things that we do. If you say that I'm your lady, I can't stop thinking of you. If you told me to my face, you would lie right through your teeth. Would anybody know this is meant for me? I'm not the one to cry or throw my heart away. Can you show me all your love? Cause I'm tired of these games. I know I find the right guy, the one I dreamed he'd be. Give it all that you can, stumble and fall, love will set me free. Baby, 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 don't you know you drive me crazy? I love the things that we do. Baby, 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 if you say that I'm your lady, cause I can't stop thinking of you. Wanna play the game, make it up, make it up. It's what we do, do, do. We play the game, shake it up, wake it up. I'm thinking of you. It's alright, it's alright, it's alright. Which for the There's one simple vision hack anyone can use to improve vision.